Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and today we're going to be talking about the first player from the USFL to be, go be going to the Carolina Panthers. It is going to be USFL champion cornerback Tay Hayes of the formerly Birmingham Stallions. As for Hayes, he was a very solid cornerback in the USFL. The USFL had a, put it simply, there was a lot of really good cornerbacks in the USFL. I know some of you might say it's because the passing wasn't as good from the quarter quarterbacks, but really a lot of cornerbacks are very solid. But Hayes was very solid in his own right. He ended up getting 29 solo tackles and 37 total, and he did have an interception as well as 8 pass defenses. As for his career, he's actually been on multiple teams and played in a few games. He's been on active rosters for the Jaguars, Dolphins, and Vikings in the NFL. And he pretty much, for 2019 and 2020, he ended up playing a couple games. He has 10 career total tackles. And so, he also has two pass defenses and a fumble recovery. He's... You know, a lower-end guy, but the thing is, he is from App State, which is in North Carolina. So, he is, you know, relatively, I guess in a sense, playing at a team he's been near. So, that's a good sign. As to the Panthers, as a Panthers fan, I can talk about this a lot better than other defensive backs. I think our defensive back group as a whole is arguably the best in the entire league when fully healthy. Considering the fact that we now have, like, Xavier Woods, I believe, is the guy we signed, as well as Jeremy Chin. Then a cornerback depth, it took a massive hit with the departures of, you know, A.J. Bouye and Stephon Gilmore. But when healthy, we have a very solid starting cornerback in Dante Jackson, who even as a rookie, I always felt was very good. His speed is a very big attribute, though his tackling was pretty weak at first. It's gotten better. J.C. Horn, before he got hurt, was outstanding as our starters. And then our backups, it was better, like I said, back when, you know, we had everyone healthy. But Miles Hartsfield is a backup, and C.J. Henderson... We'll talk about it a bit more later, but in terms of a backup, he's very solid to have as a backup. Then third string, Kalon Barnes and Keith Taylor Jr. And then fourth string is Madre Harper and Madden legend Chris Westry. As to the fourth stringers, Madden legend Chris Westry, you know, I'm pretty sure he's the guy who got a golden ticket and like a 98 overall Easter card for some reason for one tackle. He's heading to like his third actual playing season. He's played with Dallas and Baltimore and... Naturally, Baltimore dealt with pretty much infinite amount of injuries to two positions, one being running back and one cornerback, so he had to play some time there. He had a TFL, and he had 17 tackles, but what's interesting is they were all solos, which I think is, you know, it's like another cornerback thing. Cornerback stats are very hard to gauge whether or not you like stats, don't like stats like I test, because some people will say that a cornerback should never get a tackle because the ball should never be near them, but at the same time, having 17 solo tackles suggests that whenever he does get burnt or something like that, he does get the tackle by himself and doesn't need safety help. As for Madre Harper, he's heading into like his third year. I mean, he was with the team last year, but he didn't do much. He didn't do much with the Giants. He's, you know, a bottom line fourth stringer trying to make his name for himself on the team. Kalon Barnes was our seventh round pick. I'm kind of shocked he ended up picking a cornerback in this draft, honestly. But he was a late pick, so I guess they might see something in him. Keith Taylor Jr. was a fifth round pick by Carolina in 2021. He... Ended up starting a couple games. He wasn't, you know, that massive an impact for me. I know he did get a force home one three pass defenses and a good amount of tackles, but I think he was kind of just in there to be in there. As for the backups, Miles Hartsfield has been with Carolina his whole career so far. He had four pass defenses last year in the games he ended up playing. He had 45 total tackles and a sack. You know, kind of a guy who can just, you know, kind of do everything. He had two fumble recoveries his rookie year. Very solid to have as a depth cornerback. CJ Henderson has tremendous upside as there's a reason why he was a top 10 pick in 2020. It's just with Jacksonville, he wasn't as good as a lot of people thought he was going to be. And last year, he definitely, I think, was pretty solid to have as a cornerback for us. In his career, he has one interception. He has eight pass defenses. The only thing is last year, he only had two in the 10 games he played with Carolina, which I'm not a huge fan of seeing just that. But he did have the 25 solo tackles and 31 total last year for us. So I think he's very solid to have as a backup cornerback. Especially considering our starters, I think, are, you know, they're going to be the starters. J.C. Horn was outstanding before he got hurt. I don't know if he would have challenged Michael Parsons for Defensive Rookie of the Year because Michael Parsons was unbelievable. But he was going to be a very solid defender and maybe could have taken a vote. But... As for him, he only got to play three games. He did have an interception to pass defense. He had five combined tackles. He was very, very great as a cornerback. And in a weird way, thanks to him getting hurt, we got C.J. Henderson because he traded away like Dan Arnold, the Titan that we like literally got out of nowhere to pretty much get C.J. Henderson. So I think it was a good trade. Dante Jackson, 
Second round pick back in 2018. He's been outstanding for us. That 2018 draft with, you know, even though Ian Thomas, I really don't like having him on the roster still. But, you know, Dante Jackson, DJ Moore, two solid guys you got at that top in the draft that year. But Dante, he's been really solid. He's always a threat when he gets an interception to be going to the house because of his speed. He's one of the fastest guys in the league. He usually has a couple TFLs every year. He can go in for some sacks thanks to his speed. And he pretty much is, he's pretty reliable. He usually misses a couple games, but he plays at least 10 games in every year of his career so far. And he's been a consistent starter. Very solid to have on the team, and I'm very glad he's here. But as for Tejes, I think he could become a third stringer on our roster. Maybe he can become second string and replace Miles Hartsfield. But I think realistically, he's going to be a third stringer, be part of our depth rotation at cornerback, and help with our great defensive backs. But we'll see. This has been Zom Fox. If you enjoy his content, we're notified as soon as I upload any videos. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, have a great night.